Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling Book Duel Commentary. This time I'm going to be playing with the Goki deck yet again. <laughs> the Goki deck. Um, and this match that I'm actually going to show you is actually the first match that I ever played with this deck. I thought that I'd played that um, like on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but I started looking through my duel logs uh, to look for like the other replays that I had done, and I realized that, oh wait, no, I actually just played that on Dueling Book. So that I can actually, you know, get a feel for how the deck needs to be played. So, the match that you're going to be watching is actually the very first time I ever tried to play this deck, period. And so you're going to see just how, like, strange it is to try and wrap your head around it. While also, if you're someone that's new to it, you should be able to construct your thought processes around it uh, in a way that, um, that makes it possible to keep making plays. Uh, because I definitely mess up. Uh, a couple of times, uh, but it still just ends up being like the cards are floaters, the cards are good, rematch is a powerful card, uh, and like stuff like that that just ends up being what uh, lets me clinch the game against some less than stellar decks that are stun based. Because for some reason, in the lower bracket on Dueling Book, all you face is stun, apparently, like whether it's True Draco, Trickstar, or Altergeist, I don't know if that's, uh, if that's an indicator of how the decks are performing. Um, overall, but I've I've just made that correlation. I've played almost no combo decks in the uh, in the mid range to lower area of Dueling Books rank system because I don't play Dueling Book that often. Um, usually, the only times I play it heavily for long periods of time is when I'm live streaming. But if you're interested in catching live streams, there's a link in the description of my Twitch page if you want to go follow that. Please and thank you. Catch the next live stream. Come chat and do all that. <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, but anyway. Uh, this is the exact same list I was playing in the last video because I basically stuck with this list for a bulk of testing, which is what basically got me the recording for the last video and this video. So, like I said, this is the very first game I played with Goki, the very first match I played with Goki uh, online, transitioning things that I knew about the deck from like the things and the theories in my head and the stuff that I had been told to actually trying to play the cards out. So, I felt like this would have been a more interesting one to show because I could explain um, some things and show you how even somebody that like at least knows what all these cards do and knows where he should be going can still actually mess up in the gameplay portion. But basically, that's basically it for this. Let's not waste any more time and let's jump straight into the first game. Alright, so going into the first game, you see that I had a very interesting Rock, Paper, Scissors uh, interaction again. Apparently, I just can't have a one-and-go Rock, Paper, Scissors interaction, but I get to go second. Uh, lucky me, and I get to play against Trick Stars. Also lucky me, I think this deck is absolute trash because it can't out a vanilla 2000 monster. Uh, a vanilla monster with 2000 attack, it can't out that card unless you draw Scapegoat or Eater of Millions or something like that. So, uh, like, I think this deck is awful in terms of, uh, it's probably the worst stun variant, like, I've ever seen because it's just... Your, your only wins are with, like, reincarnation stuff. But anyway, I go second against a Licorice plus four traps. I go chain link one Super X, chain link two Blue Mountain Butterspy, which is one of my favorite interactions. And I'm trying to bait the reincarnation that I know is there because once I bait it, get it out of the way. Unless he has Droll, then I'm not going to be, you know, my turn's not going to be over. Uh, but I draw into all traps and reinforcement of the army and Soul Charge. And Soul Charge isn't live for anything because I don't have any monsters to facilitate the combo. If I'd drawn any Goki monster at all during that interaction, then I would have been able to special it off the Suprex that was still trying to resolve. But instead, I draw nothing. I have to show my opponent my hand because I can't resolve Suprex. But I have traps, so like I feel like I'm alright, right? So I set four and pass turn, any Heavy Storm Dusters, my two best traps, my two Solemns, which is kind of my own fault. I basically set them first, which is, you know, something I shouldn't have done. I should have set the Soul Charge and, like, the other card first. Um, I missed on my Spiral Super Agent as well, so that was a huge thing, but going into game two, I get to go first, so at this point, this is the first time that I'm able to play this deck and actually do the things that I know that I need to do in my head, and whether or not I do them correctly, you decide. I drew Ebly, and so I do a combo that goes into the regular play if you didn't draw Ebly. And so, at the point when I realize that I'm doing the combo wrong, the Ebly is in my hand and I've already summoned Firewall and gone into Mermaid. And I think I forgot to special summon off Firewall once, where I could have fixed the situation. Um, like, I think I forgot to do it once, uh, where I could have fixed the situation and actually made the play still, like, not matter with the way that I did it. Um, but I believe that I just missed that point, but so like, it doesn't really matter because I've got Red Reboot against Trick Stars, the only way they win is through traps, Red Reboot literally says you don't get to play the best part of your deck for a turn, 
Uh, like, that card is way too good. It's way too absurd. But so, at this point, I resolve my Goblin. Get a draw. So, I'm at least drawing into cards. I draw into a Strike, which is good. I'm resolving the Ebly to bring back my Cerberus. I bring Ebly back and put it on my opponent's field. Get Goki Rematch to use on a following turn off of my last search. And so, at this point, even though I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm pretty sure I mess up the combo entirely, because I'm pretty sure this combo ends in an extra link, when, even if you draw Ebly, I still have a live Firewall, and I've still got a Phoenix that is live. I've got a Cerberus that's over chilling. Uh, its effects are negated anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's co-linked. But still, regardless, like I've got a red reboot, so I don't feel like I have anything, you know, problematic in the situation because my opponent's not going to be able to out my board on their turn. The firewall's live, so Eater of Millions isn't an out, Scapegoat isn't an out because they can't do anything because they're playing a shitty Trickstar deck, as well as the fact that like Ebly is on the field, so they can't even summon Eater of Millions, can't play Scapegoat. Um, so I can just leave that Ebly there, and literally the two best cards in their deck are literally shut off because that's their only win condition against big monster fields. And so at this point, I'm just able to do whatever I want to do. So I make Griffin so that I can trigger my Firewall effect and then also reset the strike that got used and draw a new card. He tries to reincarnation my hand, and I just red reboot him. He sets a heavy Storm Duster. Uh, so like at this point, I'm free. I free reign to literally kill him through five back row because none of them can be scape. I literally have to. All I have to do is like pop cards that are scapegoat. I know that one is reincarnation, one is heavy Storm Duster. There's no reason for me to go after them with things like Unicorn or Phoenix or whatever, but this was the first game that I played with this deck, and it was the very first time that I had any sort of inkling of wanting to cut cards out of my extra deck that are just sort of extra fluff, like the Curious Package, and put in more of the Nightmare cards, like the Cerberus, and extra copies of Phoenix, or an extra copy of Unicorn or something, because here, my Phoenix is on the field, I'd love to be able to summon a Phoenix again, and then discard a card and pop another back row, you know, try and snipe scapegoats before I go for game, but at this point I just hit the uh, card with Unicorn, and I assumed that it was like the scapegoat or something, but or he just didn't have it, uh, because I've got game, I just punch over the Ebly with the super agent, and then the rest of them are all game from there, so like, it was still a very good interaction for me, and I could easily have taken that turn further if I wanted to, but Red Reboot is just an absurd card, but anyway, game three, he starts with a set four, light stage into Candina, uh, into Reincarnation, and so my hand is actually really good to play against this because I've opened Twin Twister and I've got Ash Blossom for the Reincarnation, so absolutely wonderful for me. So I summon Super X, Chain Link 2, Butter Spy, um, and now it gets revealed later that he had a Solemn Judgment set, in which case he should have definitely just judgmented my Super X because then I wouldn't have gotten a search because it wasn't on the field and all that sort of stuff, but after my Isold resolves and my Goki's resolve, uh, where I added Bear Hug off his old and then rematch and headbat off the two Gokis that went to grave. After that all resolves, he tries to uh, reincarnation draw me, but I am able to Ash Blossom the reincarnation. So, like, that's really, really good for me. So now at this point, all I have to do is start clearing his stuff. Now, see, there's the Solemn. He, end up, he ends up Soloming my uh, Troymare, uh, my Nightmare Phoenix, in which case I should still have the, uh, the uh, Divine Phoenix Blade in my hand. Uh, but I just didn't care because it's still capable of being added back. Um, like it doesn't matter. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try and do anything like that because the cards literally just it does nothing. But so now from here, my opponent literally, if they had solemn judgmented my super X, I just I feel like my opponent was subpar. But at the same time, those are sort of the people that you get that play trick stars. There are very few trick star players that I see and talk to and like see that play that are actually good. The ones that are good are very few and far between uh, because they know how to take advantage of things. But Hear that, or he just doesn't know what the Goki cards do. Um, but, like, if he judgmented my Super X, I couldn't summon Butter Spy or my thing, and I would have had to literally just, like, pass my turn, and then he could have scape he scapegoats me for game. But, like, it's just not how that played out. Like, he tries to Solemn Judgment me later in my combo, which is also another thing. I, I speak with people on a regular basis that are, like, um, that like to use their disruptions later, and their justification for that is, if I use my disruptions later, then I've made my opponent use resources, but that's that's good, and that's a good line, uh, mindset and logic to have in old-time Yu-Gi-Oh, like pre-2013-ish. Like, pre-2013 is probably the last time that was actually a viable thing to do. Anytime after that, specifically after like Duelist Alliance and all that, the game has gotten to a point where no matter what plays that you're making, if you're playing a combo deck, you're going to be gaining resources strictly off the fact of making those plays. So if you're waiting 
to, like, Judgment or Strike or something later in the combo sequence to make your opponent use resources, chances are the fact of the matter is, is that you're going to play that Strike or that Judgment or whatever card you had, and your opponent is going to be on more cards and is going to be able to continue play. Like, for example, in that instance, if he Judgmented my Isold Summon, which would also have been better than just Judgmenting my, uh, my Nightmare Phoenix, I still get two Goki Searches, which means I get to search rematch, which is live, which means I can just make another Isold. So, like, at that point, like, it's just, like, you aren't able to really do anything that beneficial. But So I just basically won that game out of principle because of the fact that I had a rematch to search and put the cards back on field. And then all I had to do is make Cerberus, use Cerberus to pop one of the Scapegoat tokens, and then make Link Karibo with Octo Stretch, and then attack the other three Scapegoat tokens. With my three Link Monsters, he's drawing to one card with just a Candina on the field, and he can't win the game from there. Even though I'm at no cards, I still have a board that is big enough to do stuff with, and I have an Isold that if it stays on the field, which it should because I've got the Link Karibo that would protect it, then I'm able to summon Octo Stretch and then Link Away, get a search for a rematch, immediately play cards. So like even on zero cards in my hand, I have a guaranteed search rematch next turn as long as my opponent doesn't top deck literally Raigeki. Uh, so things like that. But anyway, that is it for this video. As always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, I just wanted to show you this one because it was literally the very first time I ever sat down and played Gokis. Literally the first time. I had a bunch of theory in my head. I looked at a bunch of lists. I took some things out that I didn't like from the best list that I saw, which was the first place Las Vegas list, or at least in my mind, that was the list that was that like best called out to me to play. It was like... I like this because it's a combo deck that can actually play and draw into trap cards, like real trap cards, that can actually make your bad hands better and all that sort of stuff. So it was the first list that really spoke to me, if I want to put it that way, and was the first list that I was wanting to mess around with. But Spir Spiral Super Agent seems like it's not that great because the decks you want it against are decks like Trickstar and Altergeist and stuff like that. And, like, I called it wrong twice. <laughs> you, you don't have a guaranteed way to know what it is, so it's just like... And you're just like, um, well, your deck is pretty much equal parts monster spells and traps, uh, so which one do I want to, what, what Russian roulette do I want to play today, right? So it's just, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's one of those things that a combo deck will just straight out beat a stun deck, but if my opponent had played better, he could have potentially beat me. Um, like, there's, there's a bunch of different factors that go into play as far as this goes, but... I digress. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like I said, uh, let me know if this was uh, interesting to you to see the very first gameplay with this deck that I ever had access into doing. Um, if that's something that you guys like seeing, um, then, like, because I literally made mistakes, and, like, I want people to point out the mistakes that I made in the comments of, like, what I did wrong, specifically in my combo sequence. Um, so that, like, it's just, it's just how you get better. Have someone point out the minor mistakes you make to you, I mean, I've gotten better with the deck since watching the replay because I was able to look at it and be like, oh yeah, this was supposed to go here, this was supposed to go here. Pause When you're able to play a game and watch a game back with a pause button on it, it's really beneficial to you. But anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my Twitch that I've already said earlier. If you want to catch live streams that I do at least once a week, then definitely go check that out and follow the page so that you get notified next time I go live. But other than that, if you want to support the channel and help me out making videos and all that sort of stuff, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. And if you want to help support the channel, then it would, you'd have my eternal gratitude, essentially. It's not something that's mandatory, but it, it definitely helps out a lot. And any small amount, even something like a dollar, is greatly, greatly appreciated. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.